Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk about what's inside this box. Now, as you've probably already been able to discern from the title, this is an unboxing and first impression, our part one video on the Carpenter Brooklyn Field Watch. Now, I've actually known Neil over at Carpenter Watches for nearly a year now, if not a year at this point. The thing is, I've never actually reviewed one of his watches, so shame on me, and thank you to Neil for not only bringing me the one watch, he actually sent me two timepieces to look at. Just in case the one color wasn't enough, I have two color options to discuss with you guys. Now, I'm only going to unbox one of these items on camera. I think doing a double unboxing would be kind of silly because they're both the same field watch. They just have two separate dials. So we'll see which one we get. I think there's going to be either a white dial or a dark, dark, dark navy blue dial that we'll be seeing on camera today. But I'll give you my opinions of both watches, obviously, in our part two video. And that's the thing with these two-part videos. Guys, you might already know this, but with the two-part series, I do an unboxing and first impression and move on to a week in the life in-depth review. But I like to answer all the questions I receive in the comments section on our part one videos in that one. So if you did have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Carpenter Field Watch, they've been out for a little while now, but they're always being reproduced in limited quantities with new things, new features. If you were on the fence about ever getting a, one of these Brooklyn Field Watches, feel free to ask any of those questions here and I'll try my best to answer them in part two. Now I'm actually really excited for this unboxing today because I've seen this watch out in the wild so many times and every time I see one of Neil's watches, I'll immediately ask that individual, you know, when did they get it? How did they get it? And what have their experiences been with the watch? And luckily they've all been really positive. Neil, I don't know if I've told you that, but the last two people I saw with this watch actually enjoy them. So you're doing a great thing over at Carpenter Watches. But without uh, any further ado, why don't I go ahead, grab my scissors, my, my box cutter, and let's start ripping this thing up. All right, let's see what we have in here. So we have... Uh... Congratulatory card. Thank you, Neil. Um, so yeah, everything that's in here, I'm gonna take it out of the box and then we're gonna go ahead and do the, you know, do the thing with the, the thing. All right, so here is what the consumer packaging is gonna look like. And you get a little card that says, congratulations on your purchase, obviously. Um, he only made, I believe, 75 of this unit, so it's very cool to have it in. We'll see what this unit is, as a matter of fact, in just a second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and peel off some of this wrapping and show you guys what it looks like as we go through it. Whew, okay, so I'm a stooge. I thought I had to push the box out from these sides here. Uh, no, such is not the case. It's magnetized. The box is magnetized. All you have to do to open up your Carpenter Watch box is pull on the magnetic seals to open it. And oh man, I feel like we should place bets as to what color this one is, but I mean, we'll find out in just a second. Uh, with some foam padding on top, really nice. Wow, everything is neatly packed. I really love the presentation here. Um, you feel like you're getting a piece of like audio equipment or something for the music recording world. I like all of this uh, foam packing, uh, but let's go ahead and Peel this out. Uh -uh. All right, so Carpenter Watch Box, take two. This is our second uh, box for the watch. And props on the packaging, by the way, Neil. This is, I'm really loving the presentation overall. Uh, and this one you actually push out of the side and we have this really beautiful wood container for the watch. Let's throw that off to the side. And inside we have, man, I feel, I feel like it's gonna be the blue one. We'll find out. <gasps> the navy blue one. Oh, so, I was dead on, dude. I don't know how I knew that it was. I I, I didn't check in advance. I just had a I had a feeling in my heart, you know. Uh, so up top we have what's well, probably an instruction manual for the Miyota movement. Let's find out. Um, a card and yeah, yeah. 
tech specs, all that good stuff. I think I know most of them, so I'll probably walk you through all of those in a second. We just put that back up top side. Down below here, we have a spring bar removal tool. A uh, really nice one at that, actually. Uh, this is a little bit better than those generic ones I've seen uh, given away with watches, those typical black bar generic ones. I love the wood choice used here. It actually matches the box quite well. Um, I'm gonna leave this just off to the side. I've got a couple of these already, so I won't be utilizing this one. So in front of me, I'm holding the M14 Brooklyn Field Watch. The M14 being the solid brass case with dark, dark navy blue dial I mentioned previously. Now inside this 40 millimeter brass case resides a Miyota 821A automatic movement. We have a sapphire double domed crystal on top and a sapphire exhibition case back, giving you perfect view of that decorated Miyota movement. And by the way, I love when the window of these exhibition case backs is very tight in diameter, much smaller like this is. So you only get to see a little glimpse of the movement inside, but what you do see is absolutely stellar. I love the look of this movement. Now I'm gonna go over all of the nitty gritty tech specs and dimensions in our in-depth review, but gosh, this is a really gorgeous brass case on this M14. I really love how this model looks. Man, those brass wired lugs look so good on this simple brass case. And the only thing that's stainless steel on this is of course that case back, but the overall look of this design is absolutely gorgeous. You know, it's not meant to be overly ornate. It's, it's a field watch for that matter. So the case design itself is really stellar. Now the movement inside this watch features time, date, and hand winding, but I don't believe it features a hacking mechanism. Uh, no, it does not. So, you know, if, if that's a major concern for you, then note that that is lacking on this particular movement. I love how the hour hand just reaches those hour markings, and I love how the minute hand, both pencil hands at that, just reaches the outer tips of those minute markings, meeting the minute track on the outside. It makes it extremely legible and easy to read, and that is one of the luxuries of wearing a field watch. They're usually the most legible option you can find. Obviously, aside from going digital, and I really love the seconds hand on this watch. I love the arrowhead on it. It somehow ties in with the rest of the look extremely well. Nothing seems out of place on the dial here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this strap. This is a genuine leather strap. I may or may not wear it on this strap just to maintain the integrity of it, but I'm definitely gonna give it a go on this strap at first, and it seems very nice. It's lined very well. Um, I love the buckle, by the way, on this piece. It's definitely custom. I don't think I've seen this style of buckle on any other micro brand I've looked at. It is, of course, brass as well, likely solid brass to match the case and has a really nice luster to it. By the way, you know, I've never owned a brass watch, but I do love how brass looks and feels in person. It has a really nice gold tone to it. And, you know, gold is just something I don't have in my collection. So we'll see how it makes me feel as I wear it day to day. I don't typically wear, again, gold watches. So this should be really fun. Now, before I close off this video, I of course wanna offer you guys a wrist shot so you can see what this looks like on the wrist. But so far as first impressions are concerned, I really love the overall case design of this watch. It has a very great classic field watch aesthetic with the dial and the chassis itself also feels very, very classic, very traditional. I, I don't know how else to put it. It's beautiful and simple in styling and I can't wait to see what it looks like on the wrist. But before we do that, uh, I also want to note that the date window at the three o'clock, I love how it's implemented here. The backing of that date wheel seems to be the same color as the dial, and so does the gold tone of the date wheel's uh, numeral as well. So thank you for doing that. I hate seeing you know mismatched date wheels uh, with dial options. I love when it blends in with the dial, and this one does. And it also stands out quite nicely with that brass ring around it. So props on the date window implementation. Now, this is what the Carpenter Field Watch looks like on the wrist, and much to my expectation, you know, that simple case design, it was bound to look good. You know, it just, uh, it really does stand out, that brass case. I'm a huge fan of the material choice here, and I love the deep blue dial coloration. At first, when we were talking about what watches I want to take in, 
I told Neil I wanted the black tile face of the M14. And it, it's such a deep blue that I didn't realize it was blue at first, but I did find out shortly after asking about it. And I'm really happy that this is one of the dial options he sent in because it looks really stunning, especially with the gold coloration of the numerals and the case itself. Ah, this is really, really great on the wrist. So very excited to give you guys my full review. Of course, you can expect that in a week's time. Again, if you had any comments or questions or concerns about this timepiece, feel free to ask them here. I will do my best to answer all of your questions in the part two video. Expect that again within the week. Now, gang, if you found this video insightful or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in picking up the Carpenter watch and are anxious to ask questions about it and or see a full in-depth review on this timepiece, feel free to send them this part one video so they can catch that train as soon as it leaves the station with any of their own questions, comments, or concerns. Or if you just have friends that are interested in a watch that's made out of a case material not so common these days and were interested in seeing a brass watch themselves, feel free to send this video to them so they can also pick up on the review as it happens. Also, if you're new around here and enjoy watch content, like getting unboxings, first impressions, and reviews of timepieces that you get to ask questions on, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're down there, there is a bell button that will notify you when videos come out, like the part two for our Carpenter watch here. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time.